Hi, everybody. Great. Thank you very much for coming to my presentation. This is the first time I'll be presenting at Global Education and in Blackboard, so um, this is going to be a very interesting adventure for, for me and you both. <laughs> Um, my name is Mike McKay, and I am an adjunct English professor at uh, a large women's university, Mukugawa Women's University, in Japan. I teach in the English department, and I teach mostly in the call classrooms with computers. And my research and focus is on finding ways for uh, my students to be able to practice speaking English uh, with people from around the world. And I have found that virtual worlds is the best medium for that. So I'm going to introduce my community called Cypress Chat, and that is why it's called Cypress Chat, Virtual World Language Learning. Um, I hope by the end of this uh, presentation that uh, I will be able to show how the world is waiting to talk to you uh, to be able to practice your English or to teach, volunteer, be a part of a community that exists in a realistic virtual world, and I'll show you just what that is. First off, we're going to start off with uh, where are you from? Um, if you could uh, click on the little star, you see a little star, and I think, uh, can we get everybody permissions to do that, uh, Lisa, my wonderful moderator for the session? The second time we've moderated together. Doing it. Yeah. Great, thank you. So once you get that, um, could you then click on the uh, place on the world map there? Where are you from? I'm over here. Whoops, I'm over here in Japan, and so is uh, Misty, and we've got uh, Lisa there. Yeah, good. Yeah, go ahead and click on the map. Show us where you're from. Um, the group that I'm going to talk to you about is the Cyprus Chat Group has about 500 members from around 40 different countries. So it's always interesting to find out where people are from so we know uh, just how expansive the internet can be. It's a big world out there. Oh, I see we're typing stuff there too. Good. So we're just waiting for a few more people to pop in. They've um, been at different presentations, or they're just trying to get into the the room here. Um, if you are a student of mine, hello. So glad you're here. Uh, if you are part of the faculty of any of the universities or places I am, then great. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and friends and every person that I begged to come and listen to this. <laughs> Yeah, hey, just click on the star that's next to the the bar next to the uh, the window here. Uh, there's a little star, a little pencil, a little A. You know, the star, and then click on the map and tell us where you're from, so we can see where you're from. And we're just going to do that for a second. Let me look over here from Spain. I live in stores. Julie from Beijing. Wow, great. And Poland, nice. Excellent. University of Connecticut from Italy. Azerbaijan. Nice. Wow, this is exciting, huh? Pretty neat. All over the world. How many of you guys are from uh, Cyprus even? Denmark? Good. Hey, if you put in, uh, put in uh, Cyprus in there, tell me you're a member. I can't recognize everyone's names here. I don't know. Get some different uh, Second Life names there. Or uh, people just from around the world. This is great. Excellent. Okay. Well, I got Australia. Good. 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 Okay. Well, uh, on the Facebook group. Good. 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 Okay. Well, great. Then we're going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to go to the next slide here. Uh, we need to give special thanks, of course, to the sponsors for this event. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough money to pay for everything. Uh, sponsors always help us and make our life easier. Iron USA, Brain Pop, Flat Classroom, Little Lives, Tech Smith, and Blackboard Collaborate are the sponsors for this event, and we'd like to give them a big special thanks. And if you guys want to sponsor Cyprus in Second Life, please give me a call. <laughs> we need sponsors too. OK. Good. Moving on. A little tutorial. If you look at the screen, uh, number one is where you can see who's in the room. 
and um, you can see your name and your status. Mine says number two because I've logged into to other rooms. I've logged in twice or three times, and so that's why it's saying number two. So it doesn't really mean that it's, there's two of me. It's really just me. Um, number two, the area is the chat. If you want to uh, write in the chat, feel free to write any comments, uh, questions. I will try my best to look over there and see the comments. Um, but leave your you know, emoticons and um, any questions, links, Twitter, Twitter links, um, anything that you want to put in there. Uh, and this is all being recorded, and so you'll be able to watch this video later, and so will everybody else. So uh, if you have something interesting for us or for me to look at, please type it in the local chat or in the local chat in the chat, and I will uh, definitely uh, take a look at it and I will try to answer your questions as we go. All right, You're welcome, Jazzy. So number three up uh, at number three, there's uh, four buttons up there. The bu button on the far left is an emoticon. Feel free to use the emoticons to put little smiley faces. Or if I make a joke, please laugh at my jokes because it makes me feel good. Um, and then if you want to press the applause button, great, I love it. Don't ever press the confusion button or the disapproval button. Uh, otherwise, I will take points away from you. So and there you go. So you can press the emoticon. Four is the talk button. Uh, many of you have the voice capabilities. Please don't press the talk button unless I uh, ask you to. And Lisa, at this point, could you turn off the voice and we'll turn it back on later? Yes, do that for me? Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, when you do talk, you'll turn it on and turn it off to stop talking. Number five, the five area. I'm going to turn off the um, slides so that you can, not turn off the slides, it's on follow now, so you have to follow my slides as I go. But I'm going to turn off that in a little while and you can just flip through the slides as you feel free, as you would like to. Uh, and then number six is what I showed you before with the star. And please don't click on any of the other things. Don't write anything uh, as we are doing the presentation because it just dirties things up. And I have to press the clear button, which is no big deal. Anyway, good? We understand? Moving on. Great. And there's the slide again. Dun, dun, dun. Here's what I'm going to talk about. This is the presentation outline. I'm going to talk about uh, what virtual worlds are, and then I'm going to talk about who uses virtual worlds. Then I'll go on how soon will they become mainstream, meaning are these virtual worlds ever actually going to become popular enough that we're going to see them in classrooms? Uh, then for what is virtual world language learning? Really, what is it? How do you do it? Five, how can I practice speaking English? and meet the world, uh, which is kind of what this whole presentation is about, global, uh, global awareness and, and meeting the world. Sixth, then I'm going to go on and explain what is Second Life, uh, if you don't know, which most of you do probably. Seven, why do we need it? Uh, eight, what is Cy Cypress Chat? Explain the missions and principles a little bit. Number nine, I'll give you a taste of what we do, what Cypress Chat does, and how we use the virtual world to, to study and play and, and talk. And then 10, I'm going to show you how you can learn more about what we do. And then afterwards, we'll have room for questions, comments, and feedback from, from you guys. Does that sound good? And yes, you can see the slides later. You can also save the slides at the end, uh, file, or any time. You can save the, the slides just by pressing on the File button on the top left corner and choosing Save Whiteboard. Save Whiteboard will save all of the slides or just one slide. Also, I'll be posting these on SlideShare. And also, this whole session will be recorded. And I'll be making a YouTube video that will go up everywhere, just like I post everything everywhere. Um, Missy, could you post the uh, Facebook, maybe, and the website? in the local chat. That would be good. Uh, you can always check our website and check us on Facebook and on Twitter also. And you can get links to us there too. OK. Thank you for coming to my presentation. I don't seem to be able to copy paste from your slides. Copy paste, no. You need to go up to File and choose Save, and then choose Whiteboard, and then save them. You can't copy and paste. So. Okay. 
Hopefully that will be OK. All right, then. Let's move on. Yeah. OK, so what are virtual worlds? Well, virtual worlds, a 3D computer environment in which users are represented on screen as themselves or as made up characters and interact in real time with other users, massively multi-user online games, and worlds such as Second Life are examples. That's from PC Magazine. Uh, so virtual worlds are like, you know, you can think of it like a video game, uh, but it's not really a game uh, the way we play. <laughs> it's not really playing either. Um, what we have on the left-hand side is, um, this is Anna Hinchcliffe, actually. She's dressed up in a CNN as a reporter in her avatar, and she's reporting on an activity that we're doing. Now, obviously, she's not uh, looking like her real self, so she's anonymous, and her name is anonymous. She's not using her real name, uh, so it's really fun, and it's engaging, and I'm going to talk about more of that a little bit while, a little bit later. In the middle picture, you can see somebody that's on a computer. So virtual worlds are a, a realistic representation of a real world, and this person is actually in the world as their avatar and uh, walking around and interacting with people. Now these virtual worlds are also known as what you can see on the right-hand side uh, to be uh, caves. These are, these are called caves here where we have projections of uh, actual museum, and the students can actually be taught inside a museum like this, uh, and they can see and move around inside the museum. Obviously, they're not moving around. So for me, that's just a projection room. But caves, those caves are, are um, also part of the virtual worlds that we're trying to recreate. OK. Good. Who uses virtual worlds? Well, there are over 1 billion registered virtual world users. That was in 2010. I think it's 1.4 billion now. Um, besides a little bit old. Um, 1.4 billion people. Um, as you can see, yeah, you can see in quarter 211, it says 1.4 billion people uh, registered in virtual worlds. Uh, those virtual worlds include things like Club Penguin. Um, not realistic photorealism, you know, not like that. But children are really into these virtual worlds, and they play uh, so much in them, spend so much time in them. But we don't really know this as adults anyway. We're not really in tune with what our kids are doing. Now, I have, a, I have an 11-year-old, and he's playing uh, virtual worlds and stuff all all the time in his PSP and DS, and he's playing with his friends, and they're playing inside with each other, trying to kill the monsters and all this kind of stuff. It's a virtual world, but they're not speaking to each other, really. Um, they're uh, not really communicating that way. So are they virtual worlds? Hmm, I don't know. But you can see the age ranges in the total registered accounts. Uh, age ranges between 10 and 15 years old. You can see uh, all 700 million people uh, kids registered between 10 and 15. Imagine what is going to happen in the future uh, when these kids grow up. So, so we have to prepare for. These are some virtual worlds that are uh, existing. There are somewhere around 150, 200 different uh, virtual worlds. Uh, this is a cross section of the various areas that they exist in: role playing, or toys, or music, fashion, education, sports. Uh, the closer they are into the center, the older they are. I'm sorry that the slide is a bit fuzzy, but um, I couldn't afford to pay for the high resolution photo from K0. So K0, if you're listening, please give me high resolution photos. Okay, I, lo I would just love to get some nice. But they're so expensive. <sighs> I need sponsors. Okay. How soon will these virtual worlds actually become mainstream? Well. Take a look at this. This is the Gartner Hype Cycle. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Hype Cycle. Gartner puts this out every year. And I watch this. And it's really interesting. If you look at this cycle, you can see these things are on the top of the hype, meaning that they're very, uh, people are very excited about them. Um, so this was in 2008. And you can see private virtual worlds on the left side of the hump and on the right side of the hump on towards the bottom, you can see uh, public virtual worlds. So they were estimated to become popular in two to five years. Then if we go to 2009, you can see down here that we have public virtual worlds uh, still two to five years away, and 
they are starting to get into this this uh, the trough of disillusionment. And then if we go to 2010, we can see that public virtual worlds are at the bottom of the trough of disillusionment, but we also see that it's now five to ten years away from becoming uh, in the mainstream, which is a bit alarming for a lot of the uh, Second Life people because we thought, oh no, the hype's over, now it's never going to be famous or popular or anything. Well, then 2011 came and oh no, they've just put all the virtual worlds in the trough of disillusionment. <laughs> uh, why? Why is that? Well, it's uh, hard to grow something when you can't show pe people what it does unless you actually go in it and see it and visit it for yourself. Uh, these presentations do not do virtual worlds justice unless you actually experience it for yourself. So. Okay, so I gave you a bunch of, you know, facts, figures, and dots, and lines, and stuff, and so, you know, probably, uh, you know, you're saying, huh? Uh, you lost me. Well, I don't want to lose you, so I'm going to show you virtual worlds and how they actually work in a very simple way. How are we doing? Any questions so far before I get going? You doing all right? Okay. I'm going to move on then. Okay, good. Well, what is a virtual what is virtual world language learning? So in what I do is try to provide my students with a way that's a, immersive and engaging for them to learn uh, English in. Uh, because my students don't have enough chances to practice speaking English with native speakers or English speakers. Um, they don't get to hear accents and dialects from around the world. And the fact is they live on an island here in Japan. I'm living in Japan, by the way. And you don't know that. Um, people who have come in uh, a little bit late, um, uh, I'm an adjunct English professor in uh, Japan at Mukugawa Women's University. Thank you to Mukugawa Women's University for giving me uh, a computer room to play with and all that and, and be able to do this. Um, but my students don't have enough chances to, um, to speak and so I want to be able to do that and so virtual worlds are a way to do that. Uh, a virtual world language learning, in my definition, is an online multiplayer environment used for engaging students in active, realistic learning otherwise not possible in a traditional classroom. That's it. Um, we just can't bring the world to the classroom. It's just too difficult. We use realia in the classroom sometimes, you know, real money or uh, photos of the family or, you know, bringing McDonald's from America. Ooh, that's what a McDonald's looks like from there. You know, Hamburg would be a little old. But it's just not enough. It's just not, uh, it's not enough. So I want to be able to put them in the world and experience it with people from around the world. And that's why I made Cyprus. Here you can see on the left is a diner role play. Uh, this is in a holodeck in, on Cyprus. And on the right, we've combined, um, I made this uh, Sloodle classroom. I did a uh, Moodle moot one time. And uh, we've connected Second Life with Moodle. And it, it's called Sloodle. Uh, and so um, you can go to YouTube and see videos of that. Those presentations are on my YouTube account. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Misty. Click on the YouTube account. You can see the... Um, uh, videos there. Okay, so let's say a student says, how can I practice speaking English and meet the world? Well, let's just take someone for an example. Yuki Yamashita. Okay, she's a university student. She lives in Japan. Uh, she's never been abroad. She's never really spoken to a foreigner. I mean, really. Hi, uh, you know, how do I get to, you know, maybe. Uh, she wants to learn about world cultures and speak to foreigners in English. She knows it will help her get a job. So how can she practice? Well, there are lots of different ways to do it, but really, are they that interesting? So she goes and she makes an avatar called Lisa Marbach. She makes this avatar kind of look like her. And, um, but what she finds out is that in Second Life, or in a virtual world, Lisa Marbach is an anonymous name. It's not her real name. So now she feels that she can make mistakes. She can make mistakes, and it's not going to matter. So she feels relaxed. She can dress however she likes, and she can meet friends around the world. 
She can visit many places and talk to foreigners, like in Paris or Berlin or Italy or, or you know, Australia, America, New Zealand, English-speaking countries too, right? And she can come and go 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's free. I mean, how can you get better than that when the cost of lessons and conversation schools is so expensive, not to mention travel time or paying for the train, or if you go to a cafe, you have to pay for coffee even. And in Japan, they're like five bucks. Virtual worlds give students the chance to explore, create, and experiment. What is Second Life? You might have heard me, you know, keep hearing me say this. Second Life, Second Life, Second Life. Well, many of you probably know, but um, I'll explain it to some those who don't. Uh, Second Life is a three-dimensional virtual community created entirely by its membership. Members assume an identity and take up residence in Second Life, creating a customized avatar or personage to represent themselves. The avatar moves about in the virtual world using mouse control and intuitive, intuitive keyboard buttons. By the way, geek. I like that explanation of it. It's, it's pretty good. Um, it's a user-generated world, user-created world. The users create everything in the world. Everything you see in the pictures on the right-hand side, either I created or other people created not some developers in, you know, professional developers or anything, just regular people, hobbyists and things like that. Yeah. So on the right-hand side, you can see that this is a person that um, is uh, using the computer. This is part of a, a, a workshop that I was doing in Osaka. And he's, um, he's got his avatar in the world. And then he goes and he does these activities on the right. Uh, one of the activities, you see that butterfly, uh, one of our uh, members, Kazi, made uh, a pixelated picture of our butterfly, and then we had everybody move these colored boxes. You had to color the boxes and put them in the little places where the pixels are. So that was a good collaborative activity. On the next picture, you see Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll show you that in just a moment. We're going to actually do that next week at my lesson on Monday. Uh, below that, on the left, you see a Greek restaurant. We did a, um, a role play in a Greek restaurant in some place. And then you see a picture of us playing bingo, uh, move around on your squares. And the next picture is, as, is of us on a map cartography sim. And everyone put their pin down where they live, and they had to go stand on their country and uh, tell us where they're from. And then the next picture is of a holodeck, again, in a hotel. We did uh, hotel reservations and that. So. Fun stuff. Yeah. Why do we need it? I mean, why am I pushing so hard? Why am I such an evangelist for virtual world language learning? I'm trying so desperately to make this mainstream because I really believe in it. And I'm, I'm basically dedicating my whole life to it. I mean, I, I really believe in this. It's really fun. It relieves some of the pressure to achieve results it ma and makes acquisition of the language meaningful and rewarding. Students have freedom to live in the language. The fact is they don't have enough time to practice uh, with people, with native speakers or English speakers. Uh, they don't have the ability. Uh, in the classroom, we only give our students maybe five minutes or ten minutes to, to speak in English. And they're gone for a whole nother week. So they get like five or ten minutes to speak in English. And that's just not enough time to be able to, to learn the language. Also, they're pressured to perform. So they only have ten minutes a week to learn what they need to learn. And then we're pressuring them to, to take the tests and pass them. You know, can you speak? Can you speak English? Well, obviously they can't because they haven't been able to practice. Also, they need a sense of accomplishment. Uh, some kind of a, a challenge that is not so pressured. Whereas you can see here, we play this quiz game. And they answer the trivia quiz, and they click on it, and they have a timer, and everyone's working together, and we're having fun together. But it's a bit of a challenge. So it gives them a sense of, of mm, I don't know how to say, well, challenge. <laughs> yeah. One of this, this comment that Zach Price made in Hilgo Times was really great. One of the greatest disasters of the Japanese English education system is the lack of speaking and listening practice. 
But with the ever-looming entrance exams, it's always a question of how. Okay, well, what is Cypress Chat? And this is where I come in with the global part of this, okay, to show more of how community is such a big part of what I'm doing. Uh, what is Cypress Chat? Uh, I founded Cypress Chat in uh, 2008, and it's grown from five members to over 500 members now from 40 different countries or so. And uh, we meet weekly, daily, uh, after this, actually after this presentation, you guys are all welcome to come on over to Cyprus. I'm going to throw a little party with some fireworks. Uh, so what is it? Cyprus Chat is a virtual world English learning community. English learning community. I should stress that because it is not a school. It is a community. Our purpose is to provide English learners with the opportunity to practice speaking English with people from around the world. And this is really where the Global Education Conference comes in for me because uh, this is a way for people to, to meet people from around the world in a very relaxed environment. Now my concept of a virtual world language learning community is that it is a park. Cypress Chat is a park, Cypress Village actually, which is the name of our island. You can see it on the right. It's a big park. And it has a community center, which you can see in the center, which is the welcome area. And it has a calendar, and we have events going on, activities. Uh, so it's a big park with a community center. And everyone is available or is uh, allowed to use the community center to make activities and events and discussion times, lesson times, practice times. And we have very many, we have many tutors and hosts and guides. Uh, that all use that community center to help each other um, enjoy the community and at the same time practice speaking English. Okay, move on. We do have missions and principles because every good community must have a mission, of course, and also good communities must have principles that everybody follows. It's kind of the rules. In order for us to have a safe, protected environment in Second Life and to keep out the people, of course, who know that uh, there's some people that like to, you know, be bad, bad avatars. Well, we don't really care for the bad avatars. You know, you can play in your bad areas. That's fine. You can be vampires or you can be, you know, whatever in other places. But we like to keep a nice community that is here for learning the language and not uh, being disrespectful or anything like that. So we came up with this mission uh, where we strive to provide an educationally fun and interesting environment. But we also have these principles, share, respond, respect, and be active. Sharing in any community is so important. You've got to be able to share your experiences, share where you've been, uh, share your thoughts, share, share, you got to share things. And Second Life is so great because you can share objects. You can share your, uh, something you've got, like a car or some kind of game, or, hey, look at my new shoes. You can share so much in Second Life. So we really encourage that because sharing promotes communication. Then respect is probably the next one I should say because respect is so important. Second Life is very different from real life, but it's, really, it's real for many of us. So respect us like... like real people because that's what we treat this world like. It's reality and we live there. And so if you disrespect us, well, we ban you. <laughs> we just eject you from the group and then we ban you from the sim. But of course we give you a chance to, to learn the rules and to you know be okay. But we do eject people. Actually, I eject about 70 people every 120 days from our group because they are not active. That's our next one. Be active. You have to speak, you have to talk, you have to ask questions, you have to say something. You can't be passive. You have to log into Second Life, <laughs> really. That's the main reason. If you don't log into Second Life over 120 days, you're out of the group. You can come back, no problem, um, but we do eject people out of the group. So the 500 plus members that we have, well, that's actually, a, uh, those are the active members, um, the ones who are active within the last 120 days. So. Um, yeah, it's a very active group. And finally, respond. 
uh, respond is there because we need to share your opinions about our community. You need to let us know how are we doing. I mean, how can we make this place a better place for you? The feedback is so important, and your, the opinion of our members really, really matters. Communicate mistakes and successes. Extremely important. Engage the conversation. Okay, well, I'm going to be done here in just a few minutes. Actually, well, I'll have we do this. Well, does anyone, would anyone like to step up and ask a question? I don't have a poll or anything, so. So if you want the mic or ask a question, you can raise your hand, or you can um, put it in the chat. And if Professor Merriman doesn't see it, then maybe one of his cohorts will. Yeah, feel free. You put your hand up, and we'll uh, you can ask a question. Um, otherwise, I'm going to keep going, and we're going to get to the comments from everybody as soon as I as soon as I can. As I'm done with this, so let's move on. So let me tell you what some things that we do. This might give you some ideas in your own communities. Uh, it might give you an ideas to do in your own classroom. Um, uh, hmm. So what we have here is uh, a chat ring. We have this chat ring that I designed that is 12 speaking participants, so the 12 orange chairs. And then these are the people who are participating in the lesson. And then we have eight, I believe it's eight, maybe I got my numbers wrong, but anyway, eight blue chairs that people can sit and just observe. And they aren't participating in the, um, in the lesson but they are just listening because they're new to the, to the group and they don't really know how things work and that. So they can sit and just observe. So you're all welcome to come and uh, observe. Jazzy has a, a question. Jazzy, why don't you uh, press the talk button when you're ready? Oh, Jazzy. So it's a little bit different. The second life, you want to click it once and then talk and yes. click it once to stop. Yeah, Jazzy needs the um, microphone. He doesn't have the mic. There we okay, go. Okay, permissions yeah. are to stick and see. You do need you to let me know. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, uh, my question is that uh, as you showed us uh, different graphical representations of how Second Life grew over years, so a question here is that do you expect that a platform like Second Life is going to replace those traditional methods, you know, for language learning in particular and education in general? Your thoughts, please. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I do not, I absolutely do not think that this should replace traditional classroom teaching, uh, but I do think it is a, um, an added benefit to learning the language. So this is just another resource. It's a tool uh, that can be used for students to learn outside of the classroom, a place to practice, really. If they're going to learn the language solely uh, in the virtual world and not in a traditional classroom, they're not going to get the social interaction that is so important with, um, with speaking a language. Body language, gestures, uh, facial movements, eye contact, things like that. Um, they're crucial. Also, you can't get a teacher as a beginning student. You can't get a teacher to um, point at a picture and say, what's this, or point at something in the virtual world. It doesn't work. Um, so for beginning students, this really doesn't work. It's really for more of the intermediate, uh, upper, upper beginner to intermediate, is, it's best for. Uh, if, if we can get the technology for, for gloves with uh, sensors and stuff that we can move around and we can easily move our avatars around, yeah, OK. Uh, maybe that'll change, but not in the foreseeable future. My thoughts. Yeah. OK, good.
the plus to using the virtual world, uh, Vincent, is that uh, the virtual world gives you the ability to move within the environment, whereas a method like an ICT method or a flat method, what I call them, is that they, they don't allow you to move within the environment together. You can't share things together. Um, also, in the virtual world, you have 3D spatial voice. So you can hear people behind you, next to you, in front of you. When you turn, so does the sound. It, it's all around you in your headphones. So it gives you a real sense of, of uh, presence. Grace says, what is the age level of most of the participants, high school, college, adult? In, in the Cyprus group, most of them are um, probably adults. They're probably adults between the ages of uh, 30 and 40. Jens has a question. Jens, would you like to press the talk button? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you just fine. OK. Well, I have a question about the steep learning curve, which we all are battling with, with our students. Uh, do you have any ideas and inspiration for how we can uh, cut it very down? To the to the bone, um, yes. Sure. Do you see this picture on the left hand side of this man uh, with the headphones? And he's never used virtual worlds before in this picture. And we had this workshop, and within 20 minutes, he was talking, moving around, and playing this phrase invaders game that you can see. He's, he's playing a phrase invaders game, and he's talking to someone next to him while he's playing that game. He did that within 20 minutes. Um, you really can teach someone to use Second Life in about 20 minutes if you're there, if you're with the student. Yes. So no, there isn't really that much of a learning curve. It's very easy to use nowadays. Just tell them, push this button and push that button. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, feel free to put your Twitter uh, addresses and, and websites in the local chat. In the, yeah, I'm going to call it local chat. Forget it. <laughs> put it in the local chat. Uh, and um, any information and questions, please feel free to put them there. I'm going to finish out this presentation so that I can uh, get some more questions. I'm just going to show you what we do. Um, the chat ring. And we did a Hands Across Sims where we got a bunch of avatars together, uh, like the Hands Across America, maybe you know of from years ago. And we had this Hands Across the Sims. 16 countries came together. And we all got into our country's outfits. And we all held hands with our flags. There's a video on the YouTube channel uh, of the event you can see there. We also did, I made a murder mystery uh, based on the uh, Let's Talk 3 from Cambridge Press. Who killed Mr. Jameson? I made a scripted uh, backpack that uh, with, and then I had a, a quiz quiz uh, system, and they went around finding clues and clicking on them, reading note cards, and they all worked together in their teams to uh, find out who killed uh, Alfred Jameson. It was a really big build. Again, you can see that on the YouTube channel. There's a three-hour video of them actually playing the game, and you can watch it if you really want to spend that much time. <laughs> On the right side, we had a Halloween party just uh, well, a couple of weeks ago. And we had about 50 avatars come. We had a haunted house and a maze. And we danced. We had a costume contest. And uh, it was a, really a lot of fun. And we had people from different countries who had never experienced Halloween before. And they thought it was just such a, a wonderful experience because they could actually feel what Halloween is like. So that was, it was really fun. And our final slide for things that we do. Here's just a little fishing in chat. We were just sitting around fishing, catching fish, and we had a little contest. Who could catch the most fish? And we got points. At the end of the contest, somebody gets a trophy. But while we're doing this, we're talking about fish, or we're talking about whatever. And it was just a good way to hang out. You know, This is a fun way to hang out and do something together. It's not really a game. It's just kind of yeah, having fun. And the last picture on the right-hand side is uh, Thanksgiving. We dress up in Thanksgiving attire and learn about Thanksgiving. And you're welcome to come to the Thanksgiving lesson next Monday, uh, about this time, actually. Next Monday, uh, we'll be doing the Thanksgiving lesson. And we're going to have the Mayflower built, I think. And we'll have this set, set up again, just like this. And you can come in your Thanksgiving outfits and uh, join us for uh, Thanksgiving. Understand, though, that our sim only allows 20, um, 20 avatars at one time because 
We simply don't have enough money to pay for a full sim. We are looking for sponsors. Hint, 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 hint. And uh, <laughs> if we can get those sponsors, then we can get a bigger sim, and we can have more avatars and more activities. Jazzy has a question. Jazzy. Press the talk button, Jazzy, and ask your question. <laughs> Okay. I'm here. Okay. So uh, my question is that, uh, well, uh, it's right that you need finances to support such a noble project of spreading free education. So, so far, by now, I mean, have you found uh, ways or people or investors, you could say, to pump in money to the cause of free education and do you believe that uh, if we spread the word of free education it's gonna uh, spread affect affect the education the business so that they the yeah yeah I understand what you're saying but this isn't a school so we're not trying to spread schools you know, if you're a school, of course you should you should charge for for teaching. Yes, uh, but we don't uh, teach per se. Uh, it's not meant for that. Um, what we're trying to provide is a place for people to practice. So we need investors to be able to pay for our land, uh, not investors, but sponsors or or grants or donations to be able to pay for our land for us to be able to do more activities with everybody. So we can set up more activities. Uh, we can have more people there and available for people to practice with, not necessarily teach. So we want to make that very, very clear that it is not a school. Does that, does that answer your question? Okay. Powell has a question. Go ahead, Paul. You can press the talk button, Powell, Powell and ask your question. So, Pal, you click talk once you talk, and you click talk once to stop. Okay, Paul is going to uh, type the question. Paul, if you could take your hand, uh, uh, your hand down, then I'll answer your question. No mic. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Cypress offers English for beginners. Are there more be are more classes for lower levels of English? Um, the class that, uh, that's not a class, okay, we want to make sure that we don't call them classes. They're, uh, we're, they're all called times. We have practice times, but people tend to call them classes. Uh, this is a, um, a lesson time that someone has uh, done, I believe it's Pink, Pink Samurai is doing the English for Beginners. So someone has uh, offered that and is doing English for Beginners. Um, anyone can have activities at Cyprus. I mean, they don't have, you don't have to be a teacher to do an activity. So maybe you're thinking about being a teacher. Maybe you want to practice teaching. Maybe you just want to help. Then you can start an activity. And it can be for beginners or intermediate, advanced, or just everybody. So are there going to be more of those? I don't know. It depends on who's involved in the community and if they're busy or not. Uh, we can't pay people to, uh, to do these these activity times because we simply don't have money to pay people to to do activity times, um, and we also don't want to make it look like a school too. So you know, it's, it's kind of a, a line between that. Yeah, for low levels, I only know of the the one beginning cl class that or lesson that uh, that Pink is doing. You can check our uh, Google Calendar. Uh, Misty, could you post a link to the Google Calendar? Oh, okay, there's there's links there too. You can see on the, the group, Facebook group, and on the website, there's links to the calendar too that show what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to just, I've got just 10 minutes left, so um, let me just um, get to the last two slides. Uh, how can I learn more about um, all of this? All of this, really. How can I learn more? Uh, we hear about it, but how can I learn more about it? Well, you must explore, experiment, and above all, play. Just like our kids, teachers have to be children. You really have to think like your students. 
you got to get to their level and understand where they're coming from. And my my son, 11 years old, PSP, DS, Playstations, and, and video games and all this, he's, he's incredible at all this, but he knows how to use my phone better than I do. Um, I never taught him. I don't know how he knows it, but these kids, they just know these things, and we have to get on their level, or college level, where, where I am. So join secondlife.com. Go. Check it out. Get an avatar. Walk around. Ask people. Meet. Talk. Meet and talk to people and, 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 uh, about what it has to offer. The world is there waiting to speak with you. If you'd like to contact me more about what's going on, and uh, there's a real picture of me, um, you can go to this uh, URL uh, webpage is for this presentation. Uh, also, there's information about me. And uh, if you want to contact me, Mike at WorldNet Japan for Business, or email me at teachingmike at professormerriman.com. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, YouTube, and all those others. So um, at this point, I'd like to say thank you for coming to my presentation. And I really, really, really hope to, to see you guys uh, in Second Life and other places. I'm going to open it up to questions and um, comments. And can we just turn? I wish we could just turn on all the voices and just talk. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think we can do that once we've turned them off. But certainly, people can raise their hand and indicate, and we can give them permissions then. While we're waiting for that, if you would all join me in a virtual round of applause, kind of similar here. You go to the emoticon, you go down to applause, you click applause. Very similar to your keyboard shortcuts in Second Life. Thank you. Very well done. Do we have any questions? Any final questions before we, we close this session? First time on Collaborate. That was a lot of fun. Interesting. But I kind of feel like I was talking to my monitor. <laughs> so you're welcome to come to Second Life now. We're going to go have some fireworks and some fun over in Second Life. So you guys from Cyprus, come on over. And we'll put on the fireworks and hang out. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.